We, as a church, as a country and world, are hungry and thirsty. There are some with our economy who are physically hungry and thirsty. And as a faith community, we have a responsibility to them. But as we gather, wherever that is at, let us bring our deepest emotional hungers and thirst to the Lord and allow the living Word of God to feed our hungers and thirsts. As the prophet Isaiah tells us in the book of Comfort today, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. You can tell a lot about us by what we eat and who we eat with. Right before today's gospel, there are a contrast of feasts that are playing out. Before we hear about the feast that Jesus had to the crowds, right before this feast, there was an exclusive feast. We hear about the feast of Herod. It was an exclusive feast. It was a feast of manipulation, abuse of power, greed, and ultimately a feast of the murder of John the Baptist. And then we pick up today, and Jesus is grieving the loss of John the Baptist, who was murdered at this feast. And Jesus is probably thinking, they're coming for me next. John the Baptist is in the tradition of Old Testament prophets, giving his life, speaking to power, speaking truth to power, and was killed for it. John the Baptist went to jail and got murdered because he got into good trouble. He got in the way. Jesus went to jail and got murdered because he got into good trouble. He got in the way. My brothers and sisters, America lost a prophet this week. John Lewis, who came up with the term good trouble and got in the way. His life, his fight against web racism, with only the weapon of love, left him beaten, almost murdered, thrown in jail for us, as a country, as a world. He got in trouble, good trouble. He got in the way. He leaves us as a faith community, young and old, to find ways to get in the way, get in good trouble, for the good of our nation and world. I think after his funeral on Thursday, it's no coincidence that these are the readings this weekend as a church. Like Jesus grieving the death of the prophet John the Baptist, we as a faith community and nation and world should be grieving the death of the prophet John Lewis. One thing I've learned about grief is it can be hard to move forward. 
And one part of our grief is anger. And you know, as Jesus was grieving today's, in today's Gospels, the disciples may have sent the crowds away because Jesus was not easy to be around that day. The best Eucharistic theology I have ever heard was not from a woman who had a theological degree. Although she stayed very educated in her faith. But it came out of a lived experience of practicing her faith and belief in the Eucharist. My friend's name was Karen Archer. And she lost her daughter, Kellyanne, to cancer. She lost my friend, her son, Chris Archer, to cancer. And cancer would eventually take Karen's life. But she was going to church one Sunday, to Mass. And like the people of St. Agnes, she believed that everybody ministers. But this particular time, in her hurt, in her grief, she said, I just want to sit in the pews and, and, and be fed and allow my emotional hungers and thirsts to be touched. But she picked up her Bible in her morning prayer time and she read this gospel of the feeding of the multitudes. And she felt the Lord's call. Karen said, Jesus was calling her to take her five loaves and two fish and feed God's people. Broken food for a broken people. Walter Brueggemann calls the food that God offers us dangerous food. Food that is not the nourishment of political ideology or the junk of consumerism. It is a food that is freely given, just as Jesus will feed the 5,000. The food, he says, is transformed. And as it is eaten, it is transformed into loyalty, energy, work, and care. The one who provides the food we eat as a community governs the loyalties we embrace. The one who supplies our sustenance has claim upon the loyalty of the community. So we must pay attention to what we eat, to who we eat, to what we eat, and who feeds us. Jesus. That means I have to also point out something in the next, in the text of gospel. The writer did not count the women and children. Our Bible is both a human and divine book, the church teaches. But I believe Jesus counted them. We have to build a world church for everyone, where everyone counts, male, female, all stripes, all colors, our LGBT community, in God's eyes, everyone counts equal. I know it's difficult for many of us to come to Mass and receive the Eucharist. But in the mystery of God's love, I believe there's a way at home even Jesus feeds us. But there's also another liturgy taking place. Bishop Mark Seitz gave a reflection on Black Lives Matter and how 
there is something like a liturgy happening on our streets. The church of Pope Francis, the church that goes bruised, injured, and dirty in the streets, standing up for love, justice, and equality. And in John Lewis's last words, he told us he was inspired by the young people nonviolently of Black Lives Matter standing up for equality and justice. I watched the funeral mass of John Lewis on Thursday, and the whole thing I felt was powerful. But one of the most powerful moments for me was James Lawson's speech. There from the beginning. 1953, working to fight for equality. And I don't know, but it may be as important as Dr. Martin Luther King's speech for the future of our country. He makes the point in the speech that it was black women who were leaders pushing them to demonstrate in Nashville. As we hear from Paul today, Reverend James Lawson names the principalities and powers by the love of God we must non-violently fight against as a nation. Gun violence. That today the largest group of poverty is women and children. And then he says also plantation capitalism. He's, Reverend James Lawson believes in America, but he's pointing out a dark side, not totally against capitalism, but the dark side of a capitalism that enslaves people. Or as Pope Francis, I believe what he is saying, is the same thing, an economy that kills. We have to lift up all people. Reverend James Lawson is a true patriot. He believes strongly in the Declaration of Independence and the preamble of the Constitution. He wants us to live up to their vision. There's a storm brewing in our country, in our world. And I'd like to tell a story about John Lewis and his 2014 Emory commencement speech. This was a powerful speech by John Lewis to the young people. He said, he tells the story about being a child in his aunt's house, his aunt's what he called a shotgun house. And he described to the young people what a shotgun house looks like. And he said, nonviolently, it's a house where you can roll a basketball one side in to the out. His aunt loved and hold the house with dignity. But on this particular day, there was a storm brewing outside. And he said, his aunt grabbed all the children's hands, and as the wind blew on one side of the house, they all held hands and put their feet down to hold down that side of the house. And then they ran to another side and held their hands and held down Aunt's house. And these are John Lewis's words about never leaving the house. We never left the house. I say to you, as you leave here, leave this beautiful campus. The wind may blow, the thunder may roll, and the lightning may flash, and the rain may beat on our house. Call it the house of Emory. Call it the house of Georgia, or Alabama, or New York. Call it the house of Europe. Call it the house of Africa. Call it the house of Asia. Call it the house of Central South America. 
Call it the house of the Middle East. We all live in the same house. It doesn't matter if we are black or white, Latino American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether we are straight or gay. We are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house. Be bold. Be courageous. Stand up. Speak up. Speak out. And find a way to create the beloved community. The beloved world. A world of peace. A world that recognizes the dignity of all humankind. Never become bitter. Never become hostile. Never hate. Live in peace. We're one. One people and one love. Thank you very much. No, John Lewis. Thank you. We thank you for your dangerous memory. Like John the Baptist and Jesus' memory message, you lived and like them taught us to get in the way, cause good trouble. <laughs>